So in the last segment, we derived the formula. You'll find the formula written on page 476, but I put it on the board so that you can see it as I'm doing different problems. So let's see what it says. First of all, we have a positive integer n. We have a complex number z, which is equal to r times cosine theta plus pi sine theta. And this complex number z has exactly n distinct nth roots. And this is the formula to find those nth roots. So the nth roots of z are equal to the nth root of r times cosine of theta plus 360k divided by n plus i sine theta plus 360k divided by n. What is k? k is the numbers 0 through n minus 1. So these are the integers from 0 to n minus 1, because from 0 to n minus 1, there are exactly n integers. We will now look at examples. We'll do four examples where we'll learn how to use this formula. First example, this is example 7. We are asked to find all the sixth roots of 1. So the big first big clue is the fact that I'm looking for the six roots of 1. That means that our n is equal to 6. In addition to that, our k will be equal to the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, we know what z is, because we're trying to find the six six roots of 1. So z is equal to the number 1 plus 0i. We plot z, because our goal right now is to write z in trigonometric form. We really plot the point 1, 0. There it is. We now draw the segment from the origin to the point, 1, 0. I really don't think we need to use the formulas to figure out r, but I'm going to use it anyways. r is going to be 1 squared plus 0 squared, so r is equal to 1. And again, if you take a look, the angle between the segment and the x-axis is equal to Zero. So again, no formula is needed. So theta is equal to zero. So let's see what we have right now. We have n, we have k, we have r, and we have theta. I'm going to go back to the formula and I'm going to call our roots w sub k. Or if you don't like w, you can use u sub k. So w raised to the nth power is equal to z. w is an nth root of z. We're now ready to proceed. I'm going to start by writing down the formula. w sub k is equal to the nth root of r times cosine theta plus 360k divided by m plus pi sine theta plus 360k divided by m. Now we substitute. We know m, it is 6. We know r, it is 1. We know theta it is equal to 0. We're not going to yet substitute for k. We have cosine of 0, 0, not theta, plus 360k divided by 6, plus i sine 0 plus 360k divided by 6. So, there we use some k. The sixth root of 1 is 1. And that times cosine of 60k plus i sine 60k. 
We're going to simplify one more time. This g to the 1, if you'd like. So w sub k is equal to cosine of 60k plus i sine 60k. Now we're going to find the 6, 6 roots. Now we're going to start replacing k by 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And that's how we're going to get the 6, 6 roots. So w sub 0 is going to be equal to cosine of 60 times 0, which is 0, plus i sine of 0. We quickly draw the unit circle. The unit circle intersects on angle the turn of side of the angle of 0 degrees at 1, 0, which means cosine of 0 is 1 and sine of 0 is 0. So w sub 0 is equal to 1 plus 0 i, or just 1. What about w sub 1? So find w sub 1. To find w sub 1, you now replace k by 1. So this is cosine of 60 times 1 plus i sine 60 times 1. So w sub 1 is equal to cosine of 60 plus i sine of 60. Again, we draw the unit circle, not all of it. We're only interested in the first quadrant. We draw a 60 degree angle. This is 1, this is a half, this is the square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, comma, the square root of 3 over 2. This means cosine of 60 is 1 half, and sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2. We have a second 60 root. We continue. We now find w sub 2. To find w sub 2, we replace k by 2. This is cosine of 60 times 2 plus i sine 60 times 2. Cosine of 120 degrees plus i sine of 120 degrees. I'm going to draw the unit circle once more. Well, first I'm going to draw an angle that measures 120 degrees. And I decided to only draw a quarter of the unit circle. This angle measures 120 degrees, giving us a reference angle of 60. This is a half. This is square root of 3 over 2. This is 1. And now the point has coordinates negative 1 half, square root of 3 over 2. Why is that important? Because cosine of 120 is negative 1 half, and sine of 120 is square root of 3 over 2. So, we are three roots down and three roots to go. What do we do next? Well, we still need to replace k by 3. So we have w sub 3. w sub 3 is equal to, by now you should see a pattern, but if you don't, I'll show my work. Cosine of 60 plus 3 plus i sine of 60 times 3. This is cosine of 180 plus i sine of 180. Draw the unit circle once more. There it is. Draw an angle of 180 degrees. There it is. The terminal side of the angle intersects the circle at the point negative 1, 0. Why is that important? 
that means that cosine of, neg of 180 is negative 1, and it means that sine of 180 is zero. If I erase the board, we have w sub 3 is equal to negative 1. Two routes to go. w sub 4, w sub 4, I will skip some more, but I know you hopefully see that every time we're going up by 60, so the use of 4 is going to be equal to cosine of 240 degrees plus I sine of 240 degrees. Once more, we draw the circle, not all of it. Only part of it, the part in the square quadrant. 240 degrees is 180 plus 60. That means that our reference angle again is 60. The radius is 1. The short leg once more is a half. The long leg is square root of 3 over 2. But we're going left and down. So this is negative 1 half and negative square root of 3 over 2. The negative 1 half minus the square root of 3 over 2i. Five roots down, one to go. W sub 5. Let's find it. If you replace k by 5, this time we have cosine of 300 plus i sine of 300. Our angle now is in the fourth quadrant. If you draw an angle of 300 degrees, again, you get a reference angle of 60. Huh, interesting. All of our reference angles were 60. Once more, this is the unit circle, the radius is 1. The short leg will be 1 half. The long leg is square root of 3 over 2. In the fourth quadrant, x is positive, y is negative. So cosine of 300 is a half, plus sine of 300 is negative square root of 3 over 2. If you don't want to stop, you can actually continue. Let's see what w sub 6 is. So we'll find a seventh root. What happens if we continue? Or we're going to start at zero. The root of six would be equal to cosine of 360 degrees plus I sine of 360. But 360 degrees gets us back to Zero. Once more, this point is 1, comma, 0. We have 1 plus 0 i, which is 1. So we notice that once we go past 5, the roots repeat.